Good morning, hello, good afternoon, good day, how do? How are we all? Um, we are back with a match preview ahead of this weekend's fixture when we take on Brighton and Hove Albion. Roberto Derby's men make the trip to Turf Moor and I'm glad to be joined by the legend that is Joe Redmond. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? A bit tired. Like you said, we're recording this in the morning. I worked till 2 a.m. some nights. Last night was one of them nights. So it's it's been a <laughs> tough get up, but you're always worth it, Dan. I, I, can you have a word with my missus, please? Because <laughs> I, I never get this sort of love in any of them. Mate. If, if I have a word with yours, you have a word with mine, please. Because I think we're <laughs> the same. <but. laughs> um, obviously, there's a few things to pretty much touch on. Um, yeah. There's the dejection of last week's result. To some, that's that's us. Um, to some, there's still that slight optimism. Uh, I've liked to sort of call it, we're still riding that optimistic train. However, we're now hiding in the box because we haven't paid for a ticket. Um, it's sort of at that stage. I mean, how? Do, let's go straight into that game then, the Everton game. First and foremost, it, was it for you the final, the final nail in the coffin? Yeah. I mean... I think what we need to win, we've got six games left. I think at the very, very minimum, the very bottom line that we can win is two and draw. That's if Forrest and Luton both don't get a point for the rest of the season. So that ain't happening. So we're going to need to probably win minimum three, but probably have to win four out of six. Can anyone see that happening? If if someone's sitting there saying they think that they think that can happen, then fair play, you've got a far better outlook on life than me. You should probably should do some like retreats and treat people how to to think positive because there is no way that that's happening. That was, and it's not just the Everton game. It's been like an accumulation. Like yes, we've been better recently, so I feel harsh criticizing, apart from Everton, criticizing the lads for like this last run of fixtures. But there's been these two games where we've been in front and then we've and then we've given it away. Like West Ham, were we in front at West Ham? We're in front at Chelsea as well. We've been in front. Yeah. Oh no, we weren't in front at Chelsea. I can't remember. But we've been we're definitely in front against Wolves. Put it that way. Um, but that that was the game, the Wolves game for me. Um, we went in front. We needed a um, we needed a win really. And to be fair, we all left that thinking, oh, point to good point against a decent Wolves side. Um, but of course, when you follow it up with that performance at Everton, um, then you know it's it's always gonna it's always gonna end up going south. But yeah, obviously, I'm just double checking now. We, we did go, we did go in the lead uh, against um, against West Ham before we threw it all away. Obviously, um, and and it, it's them two games for me. Obviously, the Everton one was the game where you want them to turn up and and get the win because it was a relegation six pointer. But that West Ham game throwing that lead away. And the way we threw it away in the last minute, obviously, I'm just like I said, I've had to check the the score to remind me of it, but it's all coming back now. Obviously, in the 91st minute, Danny Ings, which a, a shot that James Trafford should be saving, let's be fair, he, he kind of got away with that one. Nobody really criticised him so much for it. Uh, and then again, with Wolves one the up, throwing it away. Like if, if we'd have held on in them two games, it'd look a lot prettier. Um, and then we could have gone to Everton with a bit more about us, a bit more confidence. Everton would have been, been a bit more on the back foot, and then we win that. And then we'd be above them now with that points deduction. So, yeah, we have been better recently these last few games, but it's highlighted for me that we just don't have the quality. Like, we, we've been on top in these matches and we've not made the opposition team pay. And that just comes down to lack of quality. And people can criticise the manager all they want. But for me, I think I think it's just the quality on the pitch in these these few games. It is. Uh, obviously, we saw Dara O'Shea sent off. Um, <laughs> uh, absolute. Waddy, a lot of shit, um, shall we call it? He wasn't a sending off. I think Talksport have even said it wasn't a sending off. Um, it was one of the most ridiculous decisions uh, in football, some have said. Can I uh, shock you? Go on. I think it's a red. I think it's yeah. a red. Yeah, it's. But the thing is, I think the reason why all these all these pundits and players have said it's not a red is because the referee or the referee's report has put it down as. Um, stopping a goal scoring opportunity, which is too far out to do that. So it's, it's yeah. not it's not stopping a goal. I mean, at the time, I did think he was, to be fair, because our our line was quite high, hence why Dora was there in the first place. But when you look at the tackle again, it, it goes in with force and it's quite high as well. So I think it probably should be more down as dangerous foul play. Um, but I think the fact that the club haven't even 
appealed it would suggest that they feel like it's a red as well. I think I think we obviously we do the full time shows. Sometimes it's on Sundays. I think recently it was on Monday night. I think yeah, we all agreed it's it's a bit high. It's a bit reckless. It's yeah, it's it's everything. It, it's there's been a lot of inst- instances where the referee has cost us. Don't get me wrong, but everything about that was Dalvar O'Shea's fault. The ball came to him. He was under no pressure. McNeil was. 10 yards away at this point, all right, he was sprinting. But then he loses it because he's panicking because he sees McNeil. That's Dar O'Shea mistake number one. As Sam says it on our show, he's just got lift music playing in his head. That That's one of them moments where <laughs> he's not paying attention. Classic Dar, and that's why he lets us down so much. And then because he's done that, he panics and goes in with force and high. I, I think it's a red. I think it's reckless from Dara. Um, it's a shame with Dara because... He's getting better and he is getting better, but then he still has these moments of madness every week, and that's why he's not a Premier League defender. There was somebody on my stream recently saying that he's the player of the season. I was like, what have you been watching this year? What? It, it's, it, I'd probably put him down. In fact, no, I wouldn't. I was going to say I'd probably put him down as most improved, but I'll probably give that to Vitinho now um, mm. since his cameos recently. Um, but he has got better on the whole as Dora. It's just them stupid mistakes every single week. But yeah. For that reason, I, I do think it was a red. I think it was high and it was reckless and it was just a classic Dara error. Yeah. Uh, who comes in then? Who comes in for uh, for Dara this week? Because obviously, I don't know, we've seen Bayer back on the grass, but obviously it's too, mm. probably a little too soon. Yeah, for, Bayer, Bayer will uh, be there, I think. So um, who 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 gets the, the nod? Are we looking at Ekdal, Aldekil? <laughs> Is Del Croy going to come in? I mean, best of a bad bunch there, isn't it? But yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd say Ekdal, and that's harsh saying that about Ekdal because I do actually rate Ekdal. But again, I just don't think he's Premier League quality. He was so, we, when we signed him last January, and he came into yeah. the side. I'm like, wow, this kid is ready for the Prem. That's why we've signed him. He's fantastic. He don't look like a kid, by the way. He looks like he's in his forties. <laughs> um, I'm like, this, this guy is class. But then there was a moment last year, I can't remember who it was against, was it Cardiff on the last day, when yeah. they got in yeah, behind yeah. And, they, and they scored far too easy. I'm like, mm, he's a bit slow, actually. And then it's been highlighted this year in the Prem. Uh, he's not played a lot, but when he has played, he's struggled. Um, but out of them three, you've got to be picking that gal, haven't you? I think it's given yeah. us a bit of a headache, this. We don't really have anyone good enough to, to come in. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's probably going to be Ekdal. I'll be, I'll be shocked to see it as... I mean, I wouldn't be shocked to see it as Del Quar because he's tried Del Quar at centre back a few times, so he might try him there. I would be shocked to see Al Dakil. I think he's another one who, again last year, I was like, this kid, this kid is going to be special. And I think I did a Sky, a Sky Bet preview, sorry, and I even said to them like, watch out for Al Dakil. This this kid's going to be special, and it was absolutely dreadful at the start of the year, weren't he? And he's not played <laughs> since. So yeah, it's it's a weird one. Obviously, just shows a step up in class from the Prem, but I think this weekend, yeah, it's probably going to be Ekdal which does worry me. I mean, Brighton aren't the fastest team in the world, so he might get away with it, but Premier League players, yeah, he's, he has look, looked a little bit out of his depth. Yeah, speaking of players and uh, obviously defenders, Grande Sambo, it's, I mean, Fabrizio Romano confirmed it. You know, we, we've we've heard the murmurs, uh, but yeah, according to F- for uh, Fabs, it's, it's all done, four-year deal. Yeah, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I, I won't lie, I don't know too much about him. I do know that we were looking at him last year. Um, he's a right back, I think, um, yeah. from looking at my research. Because um, I remember saying he's going to be Martson regen, but on the other side, because obviously he's Dutch, Martson was Dutch. So that gives us that balance again that we've been lacking this year, um, ever since Martson left. I think that's been a massive haul in our team. We've got nothing, nothing against Charlie Taylor. He's a fantastic player and a great servant, but... We just never had that balance that we had last year at the back and company tried to recreate it um, earlier in the year with the likes of Del Quar, Connor Roberts, Vitinho, and it, it just didn't work. So hopefully we've got that balance back on on the right-hand side next year. But yeah, it's, company was asked about it yesterday in his press conference, wasn't it? And the fact that yeah. he just said, I can't really say anything yet, tells me. I mean, you, you know if Fabrizio Romano tweets something, it's bang on anyway. Um yeah. But the fact that Vincent Company said that yesterday um, would would suggest that yeah, it's it's done. It's just a case of waiting till July the first. I think contracts start. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, does that spell the end for Connor Roberts then? Um, <clears throat> potentially, yeah. I think if if he if he could choose to stay at Leeds, I think he'd choose to stay at Leeds. Um, I don't think he's a weird one. Is Connor apart from last year? I've never really felt like he's enjoyed his time at Burnley. If I'm honest, like. 
people might think I'm looking into things no, too last much, year he looked like he loved it but every year other year looked, it's almost exactly just like, every other yeah. year he just looks miserable and like he can't be bothered and maybe he's got stuff going on at home I don't know I know he's got a couple of kids now he's definitely got the one yeah. um and he does actually live locally as well he lives like um Literally to next door to Alan Pierce in the yeah, well, yeah, Valley. he lives next door to yeah. Alan Pierce. Well, that estate there, I'm trying to not give give the it's near the yeah. is it the Black Bull in Clever Road? Can't remember. It's near there anyway. Um, so yeah, so he does live local, but I don't know when he first came in. Uh, he didn't get in the team at first under Dash, did he? And then he had that weird no. thing where he deleted all his Burnley Instagram posts like a child, and then pretended he was hacked. And then company came in, um, and and then I think he did enjoy it. But I think yeah, I think the fact that he's he's bit, he, he got dropped and and then he's been loaned out. I think that suggests that um, Burnley don't really fancy him. He he were happy to go. Some of the comments he said about being at Leeds and how it's a big club and how he wants to stay there, sort of thing, would suggest to me that um, yeah, uh, he'd be happy to go to Leeds, but. If Leeds do go up and they do sign him, they will see that he's just not good enough for that league. He's a brilliant fullback in in the Championship, and I would have him next year personally. Yeah. Um, but he will get found out again next year in the Premier League if he stays at Leeds, and then Leeds fans will will soon be asking us to take him back. Company that's come out as well uh, in the last couple of days. The FA had announced a statement, didn't they? Uh, company's been fined ten grand, a two game ban. I think. One of the game is one game suspended yeah. until the 31st of December this year, um, as long as there's no more dramas. Uh, he had every right to shout and ball at the referee. The referee were a joke that day, but you can't get away with that stuff in football. I think the referee should be fined as well, but end of day, beggars can't be choosers. Um, does that fine come into play on Saturday? Does that mean he won't be in the dugout? I believe so. I think, obviously, yeah, one's with immediate effect, so that would suggest it's the next game, which should be interesting because um, against Chelsea, Bellamy was obviously on the touchline, and that's when we came back into that game. As um, I won't mention his name, but somebody in the Turfcast WhatsApp group always likes to point out, but I think he's fishing. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how Bellamy does. But, yeah, it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? I can't, I can't really look at that incident in isolation of the of company going mad at the fourth official and say, that's harsh, that shouldn't have been banned probably should have been banned when you look at it in isolation but when you look at the fact that he was going mad about that ridiculous decision where Asenjong got sent off and we get penalty to Chelsea it was never a penalty it was never a sending off a second yellow and it's obviously an accumulation of things in company's mind like all these ridiculous decisions so when you look at that you think he has every right to go mad but the main issue is as you've said it Darren England I think who the referee was that day there's no there's no punishment for him like straight away I think I think like Three days later, it was a fourth official somewhere else. You know what I mean? So there's no punishments for him. He's still working at the highest level. And this is why people get frustrated with PGMOL and the FA. Like the referees clearly aren't good enough and you're not doing anything about it. Just burying your head in the sand and finding everybody that criticises you. There's no no punishments. There's no um, consequences. That's the word I'm looking for for the referees. It needs to be consequences. If, if you... If you burnt a fish tomorrow at work, for example, they'd be they'd be pulling you aside and saying that that's that's stock there, Dan. What are you doing? You need to yeah, yeah. you need to sort it out. Same with me. If I did if I edited a video wrong or something, they'd be like, you can't keep doing that. It's the same with ref. It should be the same with refs, but it's not. Yeah. They look at them and they just put an umbrella around and give them a big cuddle, protect them from all the nasty words, and say that big bad man won't say anything about you again. You keep doing what you're doing, and that's why people get annoyed. Yes, fair enough. Company probably should be banned, but Darren England shouldn't be refing in the Premier League. No. 100% agree. You said there about people's heads in the sand. Uh, we have struck up a partnership slash association with uh, Casual Man's Matter. Uh, speaking to uh, Patey and Dave, who helped run it, uh, and they're doing an amazing job there. Local charity that help out with uh, mental health. They did do men's mental health to begin with, but it has now broadened the horizons to both men and women. They do classes on anger issues, PTSD, depression anxiety um you know drug drug abuse alcoholism um you know bereavement counseling as well they literally cover all aspects that you can they've got lots of things going on there they have a, a shop in town uh they they're good friends with the chairman of helmand as well who obviously alan pierce has been out to visit and struck up a partnership with them a little bit to strengthen our um our brotherhood with uh, Helmand Sports Football Club. Um, and just like to say, they've got some quality merch there as well. They've worked with a guy called Gatch 
River Airbrushing, who's done some quality designs. Uh, you'll see the designs in the T-shirt. I'm currently wearing one now, which I'll show you in just a second. But the packaging is on point. Uh, it, it, I just think it's really, really smart, some of the stuff that they've got there. Uh, and all the money that they make from that shop goes straight into organizing these sessions for people. Um, so I have I have got the, uh, the scooter one on. And uh, I just think it's really nice that, you know, a local local community can come together. Um, and like I say, it's just nice for people to sometimes get out the house and speak to people. Uh, I know I've been in that mindset myself before. Uh, and it's, you know, you find yourself in a dark place. So, yeah, if you ever are wondering where can I get the help, get in touch with Casual Minds Matters um, and get in touch with Patey, Burnley and, uh, and Dave as well they are great guys and uh, i wanted to work with so thank you for getting in touch really appreciate that and uh, i look forward to the partnership we have going forward um speaking of partnerships i'd like to say there's me and you playing in a midfield two in a seven aside game in america but they've not asked us yet um but yeah there's um, a men's burnley team and women's team going out to america um controlled by the watts yeah, just going back to your casual man's matter thing as well. I think it'd be remiss of me to just skip over that and ignore it. Obviously, they do great work. Do the lads in there? Turfcast has a partnership with them as well. Um, they've they've given me plenty of t-shirts over over the last few months. Got another parcel coming today. Apparently, I was actually going to. I didn't. I didn't realize that you you you'd stuck up this partnership. But I was going to wear my. I've got the logo t-shirt that just says casual man's matter in the middle and we're going to wear it today for this i got it out and it were crease and it were like obviously as you were aware dan i didn't i didn't come on till about 10 or 3. i'm like nah, i don't really have time to iron it to be fair i'll just stick something else on so fingers crossed uh it arrives today they did keep trying to get me to go into town and pick it up but i kept saying oh, i forgot sorry so they eventually just posted it so uh thank you for that lads i do appreciate it yeah and they do a lot of good stuff down there like you said they've got the helm and stuff down there so i probably nip into the shop like once every month or so um so yeah they do there is some good stuff down there but yeah speaking of the um usa partnership yeah if you're watching this alan obviously i know dan you see you will see alan quite a lot at the at the fab meeting so give him a nudge for us um oh, I, will I will be available be, don't you worry i will be available um but i need to know now if i need to really i need to start running again or something like that i need to get in shape again because i am well out of shape but obviously no i did actually tweet that taking the piss um, <laughs> i tweeted something saying like oh do you want me to dust my boots off you know and somebody re responded saying like what well, as, as as a celebrity i'm like I'm clearly joking mate it's pretty obvious i'm joking um but uh yeah if you want me to play as a celebrity or a fan team, Alan, uh, if, yeah. if you're paying attention, then we would be happy to. We could have Dan, we could have me, we could have Vizzy. Me and Dan have all got friends that we've been able to get involved as well. Oh, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully they stream it. Hopefully there's there's ways to watch it in this country. Obviously, if it's on at stupid o'clock, I probably won't bother. But um, it's it's one of them things. I, I'd, I'd love to watch it, and I am looking forward to it. And, you know, there was a, a mixed response to it, shall I say um yeah, but it's it, it's it's something i'm looking forward to it's, it's, especially watching jj play football i mean i reckon that's going to be hilarious um but but yeah uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to i don't know how you pronounce his wife's name is it kelia yeah kelia yeah I, I thought i just presumed it'd be harder to say than that i'm actually looking forward <laughs> to seeing her play because she's she obviously got a bit about her so used to play for um usa and stuff so i'm looking forward to seeing what what she's actually like so i genuinely am looking forward to that and if i was an american fan I'd, that's within the is it north carolina yeah 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 within that area i probably would try and go to it um but yeah uh hopefully there's there's a way to watch it in the uk because I, I will definitely be watching it if that's the case 100 percent 100 percent uh i mean obviously skybet just put out a video from the overlap didn't they with uh JJ Watt. Um, yeah. That, that was a that was a good watch. I watched it last night as soon as I got back from work. Um, that were quite interesting. Um, but yeah, a good good piece by the overlap. If you want to check them out, check out the overlap and them guys. Uh they've done a really good piece with JJ Watt. So give that a watch as well. But once you must have, this... I think I think they've lost my number overlap, by the way, because they used to be on it. They, they don't, they've not used a Burnley fan for ages, but they have used no. company Bellamy and now JJ. Well, I bet they're thinking we don't need the fans anymore. We, we've got we've got the big dogs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I do recommend watching it. Um, obviously, they have the fan debates, which is what I've been on before. But the, the stick to football thing, it's like a weekly episode. 
And they've had some brilliant guests on there. David Beckham, the Delhi Alley one, obviously talking about men's, men's mental yeah, health yeah. earlier. That that were a great one. The greatest meme of all time, in my opinion, has been born from that. That one of Gary Neville going <sighs> and crying. That's just huge every time you <laughs> get beat that. Um, but yeah, they have some great guests. So yeah, I do recommend that. 100%. 100%. Right then, on to the game. On to the game. Um, so no company in the dugout. No Dora O'Shea, which means we might potentially be defensively stronger. Um, don't quote me on it. Uh, but yeah, how, how do you see it going? Obviously, Brighton have been a little bit hit and miss this year, but still doing yeah. all right. Uh, I think, obviously, it's Villa's dominance that have sort of kept Brighton from being the overachievers this year. But this, we're back at the turf. Obviously, we're better away from home. It's just now we need to stop thinking about making the turf a fortress. Just stop thinking about all this outside noise. Lace your boots up and give these lads a game. Yeah, uh, but it's going to be tough. I, I think I predicted one-one on my latest podcast. Um, just just sitting on the fence more than anything. I just I feel like Brighton will play into our hands slightly. I think that's why we were so bad against Everton because Everton, as we all know. Tedious, boring to watch. They will just hit it long. They will just sit back and play in the low block and let you have the ball. When teams yeah. let us have the ball um, and and sit back, we don't really know what to do with it. and uh, We don't have the quality to break them down either. And you could see that against Everton. Brighton, on the other hand, I think they will come at us. They will try and open us up. They'll try and play against us because they're a good football inside. They're good to watch. Um, but that's the that's the negative at the same time. They're a good football inside and they've got some good players. That like Pascal Gross, I think he's he is, as I like to call him, the Martin Odegaard of outside the top six. He's a fantastic footballer, great playmaker. Um, he should always well will always be in in one of my dream teams and stuff. I think he's always always good for points, especially um with him being quite cheap. Is 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 a brilliant player, and I think. I think we might struggle in midfield against him, uh, and especially without Dara, the movement him and the forwards will create. I think it'll be could be a long afternoon, but obviously we drew against him down at the Amex um, in what was James Trafford's best performance in a Burnley shirt. We did 100%. have to withstand. We did have to withstand a lot of pressure that day, and I just feel like if there was that pressure again, we'd probably crumble um, without the likes of. Oh, Man, you you said we might be defensively strong and I probably tend to agree with you um, but Dar is good for 89 minutes and before that mistake um, so yeah it'll be interesting someone on my um, Twitter has said 4-1 uh, to Brighton um, so optimism wow. optimism's quite low um, in some in some quarters but I, th- I think we can get a draw they've not been great recently just looking at their recent results they've drawn at Brentford uh, lost to Arsenal and Liverpool which I think is probably fair enough scrape past Forest. Uh, beat Roma at home, but obviously got tanked against Roma out in Rome. So, yeah, they are hit and miss, uh, but they are 10, and we'd give anything to be 10 at this stage, won't we? 100%. 100%. I mean, they do have a few injuries. I think Solly March is out, as is uh, Mitoma, which is a big hit. For, yeah, he's uh, been out for a while, though, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah, I think he's due back next month. I'm not sure. Evan Ferguson, um, I think, 50% yeah. last time I checked. Yeah, Evan Ferguson's currently being assessed. Um they said his potential return could be this weekend. Uh, Billy Gilmore is out, as is uh, Adam Webster, the defender. Uh, he's a 25% chance of playing. Uh, and, well, James Milner's ruled out. But that, anything, Is that through old age, James Milner? Yeah, ruled out through old age. It says thigh injury, but I think he's probably knocked, <laughs> knocked his hip out of place or something. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, our injury front's not too bad, is it? Apart from just the obvious... Really? Yeah, and obviously you've got just... a few injuries. You've got, I think Dar is the the main one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the injury front's not too bad at the minute. Um, but it's 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 not too bad. But obviously you've got the main players still missing in in Bayer, Coley Orshaw. Who Coley Orshaw, by the way, uh, I've not tweeted this yet, but I've been told that he may be back on 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 the weekend. But the Ooh. guy that tells me this has said it for like the last three weeks, so he's close. Coley Orshaw is close. Just don't know how close. Um, but it's one of them. Do we risk him and then he's sort of back yes, in a shop window? I, I, I just, I just or do we it. sort of yeah. just save ourselves a little bit? I just wait till the game game isn't aggressive, doesn't suit him. Uh, sorry, suits him. Um, and then and I'd like to see him play again this season so we can see whether or not you know he's going to be up to pace and he can and he can start getting up to pace again before the summer. 
and then he can focus on fitness again in the summer rather than rehabilitation. Um, so I would like to see him play. Um, but yeah, it, obviously, if there's any risks, don't 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 risk it because I would suspect that Wilson Orderbear would be off in the summer with the with the year that he's had, and the fact that his agent's been at the last few games or, or has been at one or two uh, would suggest that he's trying to drum up some interest. But um, yeah, our injury fronts f- for the first time in a while seems better. But um, yeah, it's, there are some players who have been out for a while that people forget about that I, I won't mind seeing coming in. Mainly Jordan Bayer, uh, with the way the defence has been this year. But obviously, he did play earlier in the season uh, and he made a few mistakes. So maybe the Premier League was too far for Jordan as well. But hopefully, we get to find out, not next year, the year after. 100%. 100%. Um, it has been a short one, but it is early morning. We've not been able to even like stick a toothbrush in the mouth or scratch our arse. It's just been straight out of bed, brewing hand and jump on the camera. Um, but... Sometimes that's that's just the best way because you just your thoughts just come pouring out um, instead of having to sit in your own head. Um, but again, thank you to Casual Minds Matters. Uh, that partnership is going to go strong. I think going forward, any money made from YouTube is going to go towards them as a charity. Um, so we should be able to get something going on in, in that sort of partnership side of things. Uh, and obviously. If you want to become a member, you can. A massive thank you and shout out to all of our members, the Dugout Football Channel, Mr. and Mrs. Burnley, uh, M. Mac, Paul Smith, Alan Turf, Morton, Nate, Nikki PB, Knowing, uh, Nathan Ducky BFC and Linda Ward. Massive thank you to all of you guys uh, for your support. You can join them by clicking the join button on YouTube. But if you're listening to us on podcast, which this will be available very, very soon, um then well if you if you're listening it's already available in it duh uh <laughs> so yeah just uh bleed your ears um get yourself prepared like i say we are on still on the train but the train is on a very very i think the train's been bricked up man. i think that, that's it what has. i tweeted i you know that that clip out of thomas the tank engine i think i think i'm a bit older <laughs> than you are not where that that there's that train that refuses to go out of the tunnel because yeah. he doesn't want to get his, his green paint. I can't remember what he's called. I don't want to get his green paint ruined. Where that train now? We've been bricked up. It's like right, if you're not coming out of the tunnel, we're bricking you up. That's where the delusion train is now, as I like to call it. But, uh, <laughs> who knows? Some people keep saying, "Oh, well, we win against Brighton and win against Sheffield United." Then obviously, math, mathematically, it'll look a lot better. So I guess we will be in with a shout but does anybody see him winners two games in a row even if they are against Brighton and Sheffield United I'm actually worried about Sheffield United now because they've got yeah. um, Diaz and um, what's he called that thug up front I can't remember his name now off the top of my head McBurney yeah that, that's a decent little battering ram and, 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 and strike partnership that I think Diaz will score against us then they'll all get excited um, so yeah I'm not looking forward to that game to be fair I, th- I think their, their front two can cause us some problems but you never know we smashed them 5 0. I think they've improved since then, to be fair, but so have we. Um, so who knows? But yeah, um, probably just going through the motions now more than anything, unfortunately. Yeah, I'll, I, I'm with you. I'll take a point this weekend. I will take a point, but obviously, we need to be going for all three. That's it's, it's a must. We have to be going for all three. Uh, so fingers crossed that's what we get. Joe, again, thank you very much for coming on. I uh, really do appreciate it. Uh, where can people find your stuff if they're not already subscribed? Yeah, so it's just Turfcast Podcast on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I was having to do some like analytics for some sponsors for next season. Um, Green King requested it. Found out that recently we've gone over 60,000 followers across all social media. Oh, nice. So we're buzzing with that. Um, but yeah, if you're not following us already, you can find us on all them. Obviously, we do regular YouTube videos every other day, really. Um, regular podcasts, depending on how many games we have in a week, we can have as much as six podcasts. You will regularly see Dan's face or hear Dan's voice on there. Um, I did ask him off air. We should we should have Dan again this weekend on, on the Family Action podcast. You will. And on, you and will. on the Family Probably Actions. Sure. Uh, we'll probably need a reminder at around 8 o'clock on, on Saturday <laughs> night, knowing Dan. Um, I'll send you but, a video from the Weatherspoons toilets afterwards when I'm still out of piss, so don't worry yeah, about do it. it. Do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just, just search Turfcast Podcast, and even if you just went on Google and searched it, you'd find us. But, yeah, we're on pretty much everything and anything and everything. Happy days, happy days. And thank you to everyone for listening on the podcast as well. Thank you for everyone watching. Uh, as this will now be out. Um, So thank you very much. Let's hope for a positive result this weekend and that everybody else goes to shit, that they all had a dodgy lasagna and everything goes to pot. But until next time, 
Auf Wiedersehen and up the clarets. Come on, Billy.